The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mama Me, <laughs> in America is a wonderful thing called a newspaper. Greatest example of a freedom of speech. To give you more idea what the newspaper is like, uh, well, you remember our barber in a castle of mine in a little town in Italy? How he's a talk and a gossip and everything and a say what's going to happen tomorrow? <laughs> well, here, newspaper is like our barber, only with the comic strips. <laughs> <laughs> but a wonderful thing about a newspaper is the Sunday paper. I guess the reason they call it the Sunday paper is it because it's a way about a six pounds. <laughs> you read a pound a day and you take a Sunday off. <laughs> If you was to come here, you would get all the mixed up with the newspapers. They got so many editions. As a six-star edition, that's where we're winning the war. Then as a seven-star, that's one of the other side is a winner. <laughs> then the eight-star, we're winning, a nine-star, they're winning. Then there's a ten-star, last the paper of the day. And they want that you should hardly be able to wait for next day's paper, so the headlines, nobody's a winning is a stable mate. <laughs> but still in all, Mamma Mia, I guess you know what's happening in the world. And when I'm, when I'm read the papers, it's making me, it's making me very sad. So sad, sometimes I'm not even able to work. And so I'm going to go next door to my friend Pasquale, and I'm even willing he should open up his big mouth and say, Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, that's not a little cabbage puss. <laughs> Sounding like a fellow who's a jumper from his airplane, open as a parachute, and find out there's no strings attached. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, you know how it is. No, how is it? Well, uh, What's happening today? You can't live a normal life when you read what's going on in the papers. The war, the bombs. Oh, the... oh so that's it. The Luigi trouble with you is you read the wrong newspapers. Huh? That's all right. <laughs> hey, here's the newspaper you should read. It's from a Kansas City. Pasquale, how come are you reading a paper from a Kansas City? Hey, Luigi, look out of my ears. Do they look bigger to you? Mm, no, no, Pasquale. They go down from the top of your head to your jaw, like always. <laughs> but why should your ears be bigger? Because I got the biggest idea I've ever got. And when Pasquale gets a big idea, it's to fill up his brains and push out the ears. <laughs> yeah, but Pasquale, what's it as a big idea you got? Come here, come here. Look. All right. Take the paper and open up to the farm section. All right. Uh, 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 read, read. For a sailor... Three-acre farm in the center of the United States. <laughs> All them improvements, water, electricity, grow you on a vegetable. Self-sufficient, wonderful, hide away. That's quality I'm going to understand. What's all about? Ooh, what a dumb skull. <laughs> Luigi, I'm buying that farm. You are? Eh? Sure. Comes to the day they drop the atom bomb on a Chicago. Psh, Pasquale's an old here. He's living in a prairie. <laughs> Pasquale, how are you going to say such a thing? I'm a heard of people talking like that, but I'm going to never believe it. they really mean it. Well, I mean it. This farm is going to be a nice little place for two, me and my daughter, Rosa. But if you're willing to come along, I make it for three. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Pasquale, you don't have to move one step. 
Rosa, she's away 250 pounds, all right? So what? If any bombs is going to be dropped, the safest place in the country is going to be right here in Chicago in the back of a Rosa. <laughs> Wise guy, eh? Wait, someday you're gonna be laughing from the other side of your nose. Hey, Pasquale, if you serious, I'm gonna wanna talk with you. Here in America, I'm a got the freedom. And that's no mean of freedom to run away. Well, uh, hooray for Patrick's a Henry. <laughs> all right, all right. So you an American. What do you think's gonna happen if you're living in a Kansas? You're gonna become a Czechoslovakian? <laughs> Pasquale, I'm gonna like this conversation. If you don't mind, I'm gonna go to my night school. Go, class, go, sir. see if I can. Just so remember, I try to give you advice. Sir. You're I'm gonna don't want your advice. All sir. right, then take your choice. You wanna be a dead hero or a live coward? I don't know. All I know is that I don't wanna be a Pasquale. You don't wanna be a Pasquale? Listen! <laughs> The class should have started 15 minutes ago. I wonder what's keeping Miss Balding. Sure, that's the first time my teacher has ever been late. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping nothing is wrong with her. Say, wait a minute, I got an idea. Let's show her what good pupils we are, huh? We're going to start the class anyway. That's yeah, a good idea. Until she comes, I'm going to be the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> now, class, quiet, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Presente. Mr. Horowitz? Here. Speak up louder, Mr. Horowitz, or I'll have to keep you off the class. With you, it's no bargain. <laughs> Good evening, class. <clears throat> I'm sorry I'm late, gentlemen, but I've just come from a very big school conference, and I have some news that concerns all of us. What is it, Miss Baldwin? Well, the school board has decided to try a new idea. So once every three months, we're going to hold a gigantic city class meeting. Now, this Friday will be the first one, and it will be attended by every night school pupil in the city, over 10,000. Oh, what, 10,000? Yeah. By the time they get through calling the rules, the meeting will be adjourned. <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. We feel that these city class meetings are of tremendous importance, especially in these times. It gives us all a chance to get together, to see and know each other, and to discuss our problems. Is it going to be some big speaker there, Miss Baldwin? No, no, that's just it. We don't want anyone outside the night school classes to participate. And, well, the board conferred a great honor on me. You, you mean you are going to speak? No, but they thought I was doing so well with my class and I had such good material that they gave me the honor of selecting one of you. Mm, they say you got good material and I feel like a worn-out herringbone. <laughs> Miss Spaulding, I now, could just never... just a second. I'll accept no one's refusal to speak. After all, there's nothing to worry about. This meeting will be attended by people just like any one of you. Himmel, imagine if they are like Olsen. That's like sitting in front of 10,000 quiz kids with spitballs. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please let me get to my point. Now, I've decided that you tell me what you would speak about, and I'll make my selection. Mr. Basco, what would you like to talk about? Huh? Well, I... Honestly, Miss Balding, if I'm had something to say, I would have talked about... Well, we'll get back to you. Mr. Schultz? Well, as long as you ask me, I'm going to tell you. I would say, why are we paying such high taxes? And why are we getting so little for the dollar? Yeah, what's happening in Washington? And I mean D.C. And if All I right, had anything to do with it, All right. we, we would immediately declare a moratorium. All right, Mr. Schultz. All right. It was the first day of the new session of Congress. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Schultz. I may use you. It's no use, Miss Balding. I'm already too pooped for Friday. <laughs> Mr. Horowitz, have you any ideas? Well, Miss Spaulding, it seems to me it might be good to say that the best way to keep our senses in this world is to be strongest within ourselves and to be strong to those who look to us for guidance, our families. The family must be stronger than ever. That's a very good thought, Mr. Horowitz. Mr. Olson. Well, Miss Balding, as you know, I could talk fluently on a thousand subjects. <laughs> Maybe I could start with my analysis of world events. Then I could summarize the glorious history of America. Then I would forecast the future. And during the next hour or two, I would answer questions from the audience. Then there would be a short recess while everybody went home and got their guns. <laughs> Mr. Schultz. Well, Mr. Basco, we're back to you again. Miss Balling, I think what everybody said is very, very good. 
I wish I had a such a good idea. Well, I'm sure you have. Surely you read the newspapers and discuss things with people. Yeah, yeah, I'm a discusser. Sure, I'm a discusser. Like a Pasquale. He's a tell me he's a moving away from Chicago, so when Adam Bombers a come, he's a no here. Imagine. He's a so sure Adam Bombers are going to be dropped, he's a never even a figured out how you stop it. <laughs> so I told him, I'm going to come here to run away. I'm going to want to be a Pasquale. Freedom is something I'm going to hold on to. I'm not going to explain a freedom, but, but maybe I'm going to tell him what is a meaning to me. But what a good is it? He's going to want to listen. He's Mr. Basco, to... you're going to be the speaker. Me? But I'm exposing... And the subject of your talk will be what freedom means to me. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, we'd like to say a word about chewing enjoyment. When you're busy at your job or working around your home, it's a satisfaction to chew on a smooth, delicious piece of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. It really is. That good, easy chewing goes right along with your work, helps keep you feeling right, and makes the job seem easier and pleasanter. The refreshing, long-lasting flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint adds to your enjoyment and leaves a fresh, clean taste in your mouth. So for chewing enjoyment, and a delicious taste treat, always keep Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Get a few packages when you go to the store. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. So, Mamma Mia, you can see what a big honor is given to me. I'm speaking in front of 10,000 pupils in the biggest city class. And I'm afraid. Schultz has told me not to be afraid. I'm sure to close my eyes and imagine there's only 9,000. <laughs> anyway, I was to start to write my speech, and it was hard to put down on the paper what I thought in my head. I'm a looked up at the word the freedom in my 10 cent dictionary. It's to say, freedom, see liberty. So I'm going to look up a liberty, and it's to say, liberty, see independence. <laughs> I'm going to look up independence, and it says, independence, see democracy. <laughs> Mamma mia, I'm going to think they use that word, the freedom, to advertise all the other words in a dictionary. <laughs> anyway, I was starting to write, when all of a sudden a man I'm going to never see before is to come into my store. How do you do, sir? Oh, hello. Come on, come on in. Is it some antique you want to buy? Not today. My name is Byron, and I represent the Crusade for Freedom. Oh, that's so funny. My name is Abasco. I'm going to represent the same thing. <laughs> oh, then you've already been told about the petition. What the petition? I thought you was uh, meant to buy my speech. Well, perhaps I'd better explain, sir. The Crusade for Freedom is a big national movement, and our aim is to get the signature of every American on our freedom scrolls. Excuse me, you talk very nice, sir. You was born in America, huh? Well, yes, Massachusetts. My oh. father was born in Rhode Island, and my grandfather was born there, too. <laughs> Mamma mia. You was an American a hundred years before you was born, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Basco... Can I, can I see one of those, uh, those uh, petition, uh, Mr. Byron? Why, certainly. That's what we want you to do. Read it. Here. All right. Uh, declaration, I believe, the sacredness, dignity, divine right, the pledge... Aggression of Freedom Bell, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Harold Stassen, Cordella Hall. Mamma mia, I'm better not to sign a this paper. Why not? I'm going to leave a room for Harry S. Truman. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Basco. Here, just sign your name. To oh, sure, truck. sure. Luigi Basco. There. I only wish I had a middle name or two, so it would be more of a me to put down. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Basco. You know, after we've collected all the signatures, these Freedom Scrolls are going to be permanently enshrined in the base of a huge Freedom Bell in Berlin. My name it too, huh? Well, of course. Eisenhower, Stassen, Hall, Basco, Truman. <laughs> hey, that sounds pretty good, huh? Well, you sound very enthusiastic, Mr. Basco. Say, I wonder if you'd put this poster in your window. Oh, sure, I'm glad to. And perhaps you could take a few of these scrolls and get some signatures. Well, I, I would like to collect signatures. 
But I'm got a speech to make, and it's for Friday night. Oh, how far have you gotten in your speech? Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, go on. If I'm a go on, I'm a fall off of the page. <laughs> That's all I'm a got. Oh. You see, it's harder for me to... Wait. Wait. I'm a going to collect the signatures for this crusade. And then I'm going to ask the people what they say, and then I'm going to put it all in my speech. A wonderful idea. That way you can kill two birds with one stone. Huh? You can kill two birds with one stone. If you don't mind, I'm a just to collect the signatures. I'm going to like it to kill birds. <laughs> Just an expression, Mr. Basco. Well, goodbye, sir, and thank you very much for your help. And, uh, oh, yes, I'm sure you'll read up on this literature and get the people you ask to read the same thing, huh? It's important, you know. If they want to make a voluntary contribution, they may, too. Oh, sure, sure. And I don't know worry. I'm going to get you hundreds of names. I'm sure you will. You've got the spirit. Well, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Hey, wait, wait. Maybe you'd do me a big favor, huh? Why, certainly. What is it? You want to be the first to sign it? <laughs> Pasquale, Pasquale, come here. I've got a wonderful thing for you to sign. It's a very oh, important... Oh, wait, that... wait, back up. You just went through a purple light. <laughs> purple light? Yes, sir. That's a red light that's a turn of blue from being passed so fast. <laughs> now, take easy. Start from the finish and go backwards, nice and slow. Pasquale, you and me don't have to argue no more. You read this, and then you'll be happy to sign this petition. Sign? Luigi, you brains, the flu, you Cooper, maybe? I'm never signing nothing. Since I've been in America, the only thing I ever sign is a check. It's a break of my heart every time I do it. Yeah, but it was Luigi, funny. I wouldn't have signed the Declaration of Independence if a George Washington himself handed me as a fountain pen. I stop a stuff under my face with that pamphlet. Even if this is the most important thing you could sign? Who knows what's important? All I know is uh, keep quiet, shut your face, and stay out of trouble. That's my slogan, and you stuck with it. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, are you the first one I asked? And I'm going to start off bad. Listen, I wouldn't... Wait, Luigi. I'm not a hard man at the bargain with. I'm even willing to forget that insult about you don't want to be no Pasquale. I'll tell you what I do. I'm going to be very happy to put my signature on your paper... If you put your signature on a certain paper I got. All right, Pasquale, what a paper you want I should sign? Marriage license with my daughter Rosa. There's nothing to do, no, Pasquale. What's the marriage you got to do with a freedom? Plenty. You got it. The Rosa wants it. <laughs> well, what do you say, my son? Just to say that magic word, yes, and I buy that a farm in Kansas, and we all are going to live it together. Three happy little newlyweds. Answer is a no, Pasquale. N O O O. Stop, stop. I know how to spell a no. It's only three O's. <laughs> okay, Mr. Bachelor, if that's the way you feel, forget the petition. My signatures are never going to leave my fingers. All right, then I'm going to get others. I don't need you. Everybody else is going to be happy to sign All right, go, go. I'm still willing to give you a chance. If you don't get your signatures, that place in the Kansas is still open. All right. And are you going to see how wrong you are? Because nobody wants to be a Pasquale. Oh, listen, you... <laughs> Ah, here's a wonderful place. Here, right in the middle of the park. Everybody's a passerby. Mamma mia, I'm nervous. Well, here I go. How do you do, lady? I'm a represent the Crusader for Freedom. I already gave. Oh. How do you do, sir? I'm a represent the Crusader. I already signed. Oh, that's a nice. Hey, excuse me, mister. It's nine o'clock. But I'm gonna want the time, Mama. That's so funny. I don't think of those people even heard what I'm said. I don't think they sign anything. I'm gonna ask the people on the benches that they ain't moving. Excuse me, lady. Here you are. Then a sense. But, lady... That's all I have. But the lady... Oh, a body can't even have some tea. Wait, they don't go. I... Oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to bump... Hey, mister. Mister, maybe Sorry, you... I'm in a hurry. But you don't know what to... Oh. Mister, maybe you sign. Uh, Mamma mia, before I'm open my mouth, everybody's a closet. 
<laughs> hey, pardon me, sir. I'm going to get a petition is for you good. Let uh, me be the judge of that. All right, to be judge, but stand still. <laughs> What's the matter with you people? I'm going to get the most important thing today. Crusade for freedom. Henry, you know hey, what a sign you don't... You mean me, officer? Yeah, you. Get off that soapbox. Soapbox? What a soapbox. I'm not standing on anything. You know what I mean. This is a peaceful park, and we don't want any speeches made. I'm not making a speech. Look, get going before I take your name down. All right. All right, I'll take my name down. What? Yeah, I'm willing to do anything. I'm going to give you my name, and you give me yours. <laughs> Well, how you doing? No good. I'm got only two more names beside yours. In five hours? <laughs> well, that's the public, all right. People they don't want to listen, or or are they afraid, or they don't care. Well, I'm going off. So long and good luck. So long and, uh, uh, Mister. Excuse me, but I'm in a hurry. Maybe you sign. I don't sign anything without my lawyer. Well, I got to bring him here. I'm gonna get a two signature. <laughs> Very funny. Uh. Mister. What do you want? Don't run away. I'm going to want to match no cigarettes and I'm going to know the time. I'm going to represent the Crusader for Freedom. Not interested. But the maybe, maybe if I'm explaining to you. I'm a guy who figures things out for himself. But if you want to waste your time, well. Well, you see, this is a crusade. Well? Nothing. I can see you're not interested. Excuse me, lady. Hmm? Too, Too busy. busy. I know. Too busy. And now, fellow night school students, it gives me great pleasure to introduce one of our teachers. Miss Spaulding, teacher of the high second group in Lincoln Night School, who will introduce the main speaker, one of her students. Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I told the school that I was greatly honored when they selected my class, and I think they will not have failed in their choice, for I'm sure we shall hear a very interesting, understanding, and sincere talk on the subject, What Freedom Means to Me. I am proud to present to you one of our own, Mr. Luigi Basco. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a feel very bad to come here and make a fool of myself, my teacher, and all of you. I'm a very sorry I was asked, and I'm a never should have taken a job. I'm a no speaker, I'm a not gonna make a speech, and I'm a got to no speech. Oh, Mr. Basco. <laughs> Maybe I should have changed what I said a little bit. When a Mrs. Spaulding gave me responsibility, I started to write a speech. Something happened, and I was stopped. So instead of saying I'm got to no speech, let me say I'm got a beginning, I'm got to no middle, and I'm afraid of the finish. Maybe you're interested. Maybe I should have tell you what happened when I was back. So now you want to know what the Crusaders are standing for. Don't you think everybody should have signed it? Maybe people, they take everything for granted. They don't realize what they got. Like a fresh air, cut it off, and see what's happened. You see what I mean? I thought I knew. I mean, I thought I... Well, what's the use? It's all mixed up. Ladies and gentlemen. Psst, psst. Hey, Luigi, come here. Oh, I see you, Pasquale. It was a fine speech you made. I'm proud of you. Please, when you uh, thought of that? Huh? Please, please, Pasquale, it was a bad speech. I let everybody down. Mr. Basco, Mr. Basco, why did you run off? I'm sorry, Miss Spaulding. I should have never have done what I did. What are you talking about, Mr. Basco? You did the most wonderful thing possible. What? Come here. Hey, 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 what's happened? What's that to be the pastor around? Hey, that's look like my, 
like a my petition. That's right. As soon as you finished, everybody asked to sign one. Why, I think they've already collected $300 in voluntary contributions. Oh, Mom, Mommy, you mean everybody here is going to sign? Yes, that's right. You've got 10,000 signatures. 10,000. Oh, how wonderful. Hey, you see, Pasquale? Now, what do you say Wait after... Wait Luigi. Don't holler around me. What I said before, I meant. You mean you really were proud of me? Luigi was one of the greatest speeches I ever heard. It's made me see a few things are different. I'm a no move in the Kansas. You mean you don't want to be a Pasquale? That's all right. I'm a want to be a Luigi. <laughs> And now, Life with Luigi takes you to New York, where we hear from General Lucius D. Clay, National Chairman of the Crusade for Freedom, who has transcribed a few words he would like to say to Luigi Basco. Luigi, you give me a great hope, and you also fill me with considerable pride. It has not taken you long to learn what America really stands for. You have also found that because you believe in its ideals, you can reach the hearts and minds of its peoples. Thank you very much, Luigi, and the many thousands of other volunteers who are undertaking the crusade for freedom. But thank you especially, Luigi, for your faith in your new country and your belief in freedom. Yes, Mamma Mia. Now you see why America is a wonderful country and is worth the fighting for. Because only here is it possible for a little immigrant like you, son, to hear from a great general and a great American like General Clay. It's like I once wrote to you. In America, everything is possible. Your loving son, Luigi Basco, the little immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum gives you long-lasting enjoyment at a very small cost. You can treat your whole family to Wrigley's Spearmint, and you can enjoy it often every day with almost no effect on your pocketbook. Then, too... Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is a wholesome, healthful treat because chewing is good for teeth and digestion. So when you're doing your shopping, be sure to include a few packages of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Treat your family often to chewing enjoyment. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Old. A portion of this program was transcribed in New York. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluster. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.